Disclaimer, the following presentation is intended for mature audiences only. It contains graphic descriptions of crime scenes, adult dialogue, and strong language. Viewer discretion is required. Thank you. So today, we are going to talk about a very vile woman named... So the woman's name is Gertrude Van Fossen. She was born in 1929, Indiana. She was the third child. Not much is known about her childhood, but only that she lost her father when she was 11. At least I couldn't find anything else about her childhood except that. So she drops out of school when she is just 16 and she marries her high school sweetheart whose name is John Penizewski. He is two years older and he becomes a police officer when he grows up. John is a very violent man. He often beats her up, abuses her. She ends up having four children with him, Paula, Stephanie, John and Marie. She endures all these abuses for 10 years. But then she thinks, enough is enough, I need to leave. So she gets a divorce and leaves him and takes with her the children. She doesn't stay single for a long time because after the divorce, she quickly marries a man named Edward. But sadly, the marriage only lasts for three months. After she gets a divorce, she goes back to her first husband, John remarries him and ends up having two more children with him, Shirley and James. She divorces John for the second time and after that she's sad, I guess. I don't know. She divorces her first husband for the second time but after that she starts dating a young man, a 22 year old Dennis Lee Wright. She must be thinking, oh my god, I got a nice young boyfriend. <laughs> it's not funny. Okay, so. But after a few days, months, moments, she gets pregnant. And after she gives birth to the child, Dennis Lee Wright is a ghost. He just disappears into thin air. She doesn't get any child support from him. So she heavily depends on John's support. She is termed as a mean woman. She was a chain smoker and she thought of herself as a failure that she couldn't even have a nice relationship. Let's talk about Sylvia Likens. She was born to carnival workers. She had two older siblings, Danielle, Diana, who were fraternal twins. She was a third child and she had two more siblings, younger, Jenny and Benny. They were fraternal twins too. Sylvia was very friendly according to her friends so-called friends I don't know yeah she was friendly so on the fateful day of July 3rd 1965 their mother was arrested for shoplifting that's it and that's it I mean that's the end of that that part of the story so Sylvia met Sylvia meets Stephanie in school and they become friends. So, uh, Steph, uh, Sylvia meets Stephanie in school and they become friends. So Stephanie invites Sylvia for a sleepover at their house and when 
her father comes over to pick her up he talks to gertrude telling her that how he has to manage with the kids how he needs to find a place for the daughters to stay at this point the oldest daughter diana was married so she wasn't in the carnival circuit but sylvia and jenny were still young and he feared he thought that carnival is not good for kids and some idea struck like gertrude said offered to help him gertrude said that why do, why doesn't he leave his daughters here i mean at at her place she can look after them at the expense of 20 dollars a week i mean she told him that if he pays her 20 dollars a week she would take care of them sylvia's father thought it's a nice arrangement she wouldn't have to roam about change schools and he wouldn't have to worry about their well-being if they are taken care of and he thought that it's better to leave them in a familiar environment of course he thought that stephanie was her friend so everything was okay everything was great for the first few weeks but after few weeks i mean first after first few weeks gertrude wasn't get uh, gertrude wasn't getting the payments as she was supposed to be getting so she vented out her frustration on sylvia and jenny once she beat her up with a paddle i mean yeah and they were beaten up sylvia was getting beaten like only because the payment was a day or two delayed i mean it can happen but she was not merciful at all she would subject sylvia to not getting any food and often times she would have to eat out of garbage even paula beat her up and while beating her up one fine day fine day because very fine one fine day she broke her own wrist and with the cast on she beat her more i mean sylvia was subjected to a plethora of abuse sylvia was made to strip down in front of the family and sometimes in front of neighbors i mean it was sick the whole family was sick and Sylvia's and Jenny's family would come from time to time to visit them. I mean, what kind of family was it? I'm blaming both their families. I mean, I'm not blaming. I'm I'm just saying that they never figured out figured they never figured out what was wrong with them. I mean, they visited them time to time, but they never saw the look in their daughter's eyes like the fact they were beaten up not given enough food they were abused they were tortured the parents couldn't see that what kind of parents they were i guess they were not good parents okay so a local father phoned the school about a girl with sores all over her body in the gertrude's household and someone said something someone noticed something wow so a nurse was sent from the school to investigate what's happening and now you might think that she would do something i thought too but she doesn't when the nurse comes and talks to gertrude gertrude says that she had run away for a week and the sores were from her poor personal hygiene what that's what gertrude says and the nurse believes she never checks up on sylvia or jenny she just goes off to wherever she had to i mean she was terribly busy that's why she didn't talk to the kids whatever and she and 
Gertrude said that Jenny and Sylvia were a terrible influence on the other children. I mean, yeah, very terrible, terrifying influence. Because of the abuse and being tortured, getting kicked, Sylvia started to wet the bed. And this pissed off Gertrude a lot. She was so pissed off that as punishment, she would make her sleep naked, dehydrated and starved in the basement where there was no bathroom. So she would, I don't know, I mean, what was it? Was it jealousy? Was it this this is just nonsense and sometimes they all the kids and they would just do nonsense to her she she started looking so not like Sylvia she was just dead from inside she just wanted to die I think Gertrude often charged neighborhood kids and whoever wanted five cents to abuse Sylvia. They would be allowed to do whatever they wanted to do. That's it. That's all the abuse that she had to endure. And sometimes they used to put things inside of her. I don't know makes my mind go crazy makes my mind explode what what time was it the worst time it was I don't know and she Gertrude often told her court that Sylvia will never be married now that she is branded and her body is garbage. Gertrude said this and she was a wild woman. Most wild woman I have read about at least. So at this point, Sylvia is very malnourished. She is so weak that she cannot even stand up. So she decides to crawl up the stairs but she just cannot can she she tries to crawl up the stairs and finds Gertrude standing there and she kicks her Sylvia falls and hits her head so hard she starts bleeding and She is not breathing, I think. I don't know. She is not breathing. So, Gertrude thinks that she is faking it. As if she has the power to fake anything. So, they try to give her a bath in the warm water. And that's when one of the kids realized that she is not breathing at all. And she is not faking. And she is indeed dead to the bone. She is dead. My God. She is dead. So then one of the kids tried to give mouth to mouth. But she is dead, right? She doesn't wake up. Gertrude tells one of the boyfriend. I mean one of the one of her daughter's boyfriend to call the police from a local payphone the police arrive and they find her on a mattress freshly bathed I mean oh god horrible was it in the crime scene the whole house was a crime scene she was abused in every part of the house she was subjected to humiliation. She was physically tortured, mentally tortured, what not. I, I don't even want to go to the details. I mean, I could have, but I don't want to. I don't want to scare people because I was scared when I read all about it. 
you all can google it and see the pictures and stuff what not horrifying pictures so when the police were there jenny silvia's sister whispers into one of the police officers ears quote get me out of here i will tell you everything that's what she said and they managed to get her out and she explained to them everything that was going on in the house gertrude paula and john were tried for first degree murder the boyfriends richard and coy were tried for premeditated malice the jury and the things lasted for 17 days stephanie her charges were dropped due to lack of evidence in in consistent evidence or whatever it was and gertrude was convicted of first degree murder paula was given second degree murder and roy oh, why am i saying roy richard coy and john were tried for voluntary manslaughter during the retrial of gertrude and paula paula sentence was changed to voluntary manslaughter and she was given 2 to 21 years but only served 3 years gertrude was retried as well and she was given 18 to life at first she was given a she was given a life sentence but now she is just given 18 to life and she was a model prisoner model she worked in the sewing room and everyone called her mom her parole was up in 1985 and it was accepted i mean approved she got she changed her name to nadine van fossen but after 5 years she died of lung cancer so paula after being released she changed her name and became a teacher i know and what happened to john john became a minister after serving for just 3 years he just served 3 years and he became a minister <laughs>